gonna be showing you how to make our uh, Thanksgiving style gravy. Okay, and so I'm gonna be showing you how to make it the way we make it at Truffle Shuffle. If you wanna take it to the next level and make it the way my mom does it, at the very end, you wanna add all those giblets to the gravy, which is oh, yeah. my favorite way to eat it. But uh, we're gonna make this without giblets right now. And so, just to go over our mise en place for our um, sauce over here. So we're gonna be making a gravy, right? So what is gravy? Gravy is stock that is thickened with flour many times in the form of a roux, right? We're gonna be showing you the technique, the way that I like to do it over here and a really important addition to this gravy that I don't have with me right now, but when you do it for Thanksgiving is you wanna add any cooking juices from that turkey, perfect addition, giblets, right? Things like that are really delicious. But I'm gonna start with my mise en place and ingredients. Mise en place, cutting board, all right? Sharp knife, wooden spoon, preferably Ian's grandmother's, whisk, okay? I need a one cup measure. All right, I also need a little tablespoon measure for measuring the tables. And then we also have a two quart sauce pot, right? It doesn't need to be exactly two quarts, basically a pot that can hold the amount of broth that we're gonna make, all right? So next I'm gonna go through my ingredients. So I have a shallot, all right? A little clove of garlic, some flour, two tablespoons of flour. We're gonna use some thyme, all right? And some butter for this. I used some of my butter previously for those mashed potatoes. Okay, we got a little white wine, a little a truffle carpaccio, all right? Some Balinese truffle salt, available at truffleshufflesf.com and Amazon, and a Whole Foods near you, okay? We also have a little bone broth over here. Okay, if you decided to make your own turkey stock using those turkey necks and wing tips from that turkey, feel free. We're using about 24 ounces, which is three, quart, three quarters of a quart or three cups, all right? So that is all of our mise en place and ingredients, and I'm just gonna start cooking over here. So we go directly to step one in our prep during our class, and that is to finally mince the shallot and garlic. Okay, so again, I'm working out of a little, little kit over here. If you are working off a shopping list, you'll just need a nice one clove of garlic. So what I like to do with garlic, take the side of my knife and just tap that garlic clove just until it pops, right? Right? You don't need to smash it until it's like roadkill. You just need to pop it, right? And the skin will come right off, okay? Those skins and peels are something that you can save um, that would be really cool. Save all those peels and skins and time stems and all that stuff, put them in a Ziploc bag in the freezer, and then when you're done with Thanksgiving, after you've carved all that meat off of that turkey, the classic move is you take that carcass and all those vegetable trimmings, put them back in a pot, cover them with water, make yourself a little turkey stock that you can then freeze and use later on, all right? So I'm gonna save these, okay, over here. So I'm gonna uh, peel my garlic. I'm also gonna peel my shallot, okay? Some shallots, they come kinda two, two, two for one, which is exciting if you get a two for one, congratulations. All right, but I'm gonna come over here and with shallots, very simple. We always just wanna trim off that frilly end, okay? So I got that frilly end I'm trimming and I'm gonna trim that root end, okay? And then we're just gonna cut this shallot directly in half over here. Okay, and we're gonna do that, again, I got a two for one, so I'm gonna do that with both shallots. And then just make sure you peel those shallots down, that way you get a nice, clean shallot, all right? So we got our clean shallots and garlic over here, okay? And so what I wanna do with the garlic is I just wanna mince it up, so trim off any root ends. Again, you can save that along with your garlic uh, peels. Trim off any pieces of the garlic that aren't beautiful, like any little bruises or anything. And then just come over here with your garlic, take that knife and just cut it really nice and thin. Okay. All the way through. And then what I want to do is come over here. I'm just going to really finely chop it up.
get my garlic beautifully minced, okay, or cut hashé, if you may. I'm just gonna go ahead, set that garlic onto the edge of my cutting board. All right. You can use, um, I like using a knife for this. Some people like using that little garlic crusher. Personally, I do not like those because you like kind of squeeze out all the juice. Sometimes you can get a little bit bitterness flavor uh, by doing that, but I like using a knife, okay? So, with my shallots, I wanna leave the root facing away from me. I'm gonna make vertical slices in my shallot, just not all the way through that root, okay? And then I'm gonna turn my shallot and come across the shallot. Again, not all the way through the root to square it up. And then I just wanna come over here and finely mince that shallot as small as I can, all right? Small as I can over here. Beautiful. And you basically want it to be about the same size as that garlic, okay? Again, when things are cut similar size, they're gonna cook at a similar rate, right? So if my garlic is really nice and small and my shallot is the same size, I can put them in the pan together at the same time and they will cook basically at the same rate, okay? So again, over here, using that knife to finally mince up the shallot. Any of those uh, ends of the shallot, right, the root ends, just go ahead, set them off to the side. You can save them along with uh, those peels of the shallot and the garlic to add to our Thanksgiving stock pot. All right, I'd really like for all of you to make some chick some turkey stock with that leftover turkey carcass it's much better than just popping it in the trash can all right I got my shallots beautifully sliced, all right, into my small pieces. Got my garlic chopped up as well. Again, I'm gonna take those little shallot ends and save them in my little stock pot area, okay? So I'm gonna set these shallots off to the side along with my garlic, all right? And the next step that I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna take some truffle carpaccio and add it into the mix, okay? We already used half of this carpaccio for our buttermilk whipped mashed potatoes. I'm gonna use a little bit too in here as well uh, to chop up. That way we can fold into that gravy right at the very end. Get a little uh, truffleized turkey gravy, okay? So I like using a fork, just remove that carpaccio from that jar. Make sure you save that oil. You can add a little truffle oil to those whipped mashed potatoes if you like, okay? Or you can save it, drizzle it on uh, some turkey tomorrow if you'd like. But come over here and we're just gonna chop up this carpaccio the same way like we did for our potatoes, okay? Which is just to chop it really nice and fine. So, there you go. We got truffles chopped up for our gravy. And they don't need to be like super, super fine like a paste. All right, just nice and nice and small. So, I got a little bowl or a little ramekin. I'm just gonna set those into. All right. Beautiful. And then the next item that I have over here is my time, okay? So, you wanna come over here, grab that time. We're using just a couple sprigs of thyme over here, right? But what I like to do is, is chop it up, that way we can add it into our gravy at the very end, all right? So just do your best to strip those little thyme leaves off of those stems and get them into a little pile. All right, and again, 
with those stems, make sure you save those stems. Those are delicious. They work perfect for the stock pot. All right, truly, if you ever go in a professional kitchen, you don't really waste anything. There's something to do with every single piece of most products, right? So come over here, strip down those little thyme leaves off of those stems, okay? And we're just gonna chop it up. And all I'm really looking for over here is about half a tablespoon, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of chopped thyme, okay? So again, take those little stems, save them, all right? And then take your knife and just run it through this thyme. Personally, I'm not one of those people that thinks time should be completely obliterated, right? And be like super, super crazy small. If I get a little piece of time and it's got a couple leaves on it, maybe even almost a little ploosh to it, personally, that does not upset me, all right? So, grab that bit of time. Oh, okay, and grab yourself a little bowl or something like that. Pop that time right in there, okay? Beautiful. And then, you're just gonna set that off to the side. So, okay, I'm just gonna take one moment, clean up my work surface. If you all notice, I always keep a nice, damp kitchen towel folded up in my work area. That's how I wipe down all the surfaces, keep everything nice and clean, okay? So, from the top over here, you can see we have all of our ingredients, right? We got our garlic our shallots, our chopped truffle carpaccio, and that chopped thyme over here. All right, so uh, we're gonna show you how to start making this gravy. Again, if you are watching this from start to finish, you also have those potatoes simmering over there. Okay, oh, so yeah. what I want you to do next is we're gonna go down to step one in our how to cook section, and we're gonna get our butter melted, okay? So we just need one ounce of butter, which is a quarter of a stick, okay? So come over here, cut one ounce of that butter. All right, now I'm just gonna pop that butter into our two quart saucepan. And I'm gonna heat this up on about medium low heat, okay? So we're gonna go about medium low heat. And what I wanna do is I wanna cook this butter until it starts getting nice and, and foamy, okay? And so the idea here is we're actually gonna cook the shallots and garlic with a pinch of truffle salt in our um, butter, right? Let it get nice, soft, and delicious. And then we're gonna go and finish making the gravy from there. But the, the all these little steps are really important to make sure that the, the finished product is beautiful, okay? So you can see my butter's foaming up at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead Grab my little bench scraper. Again, you don't need this, but you can use a knife if you have one of those too. I'm just gonna come over here and add those shallots and garlic into my pan, all right? So, now that we got those shallots and garlic in our pan over here, we wanna add one pinch of Balinese truffle salt, which I got a little bit right here in this container. All right, make sure you let that salt rain down. Wow. To create that beautiful symphony of flavor over there, okay? But what you wanna do is, is just go ahead, keep stirring up those shallots and garlic, okay? And so this is not gonna take very long to cook, all right? In fact, this sauce, this, this shallots and garlic ideally are gonna cook very, very quickly. And what I'm looking for is, I wanna cook these vegetables, and personally, I like getting a little bit of caramelization on them, right? Maybe just a little bit of browning going on uh, to get that flavor. If you don't really like a very like pronounced garlicky flavor, you can cook these, these vegetables and, and not get any color on them, right? That's a really good way I know some people are kind of sensitive to garlic and don't really like the flavor of it. 
A really good way if you're ever using garlic but you don't really want to taste it is just cook it without color, right? All right, so I've cooked my garlic and shallots just until they got lightly caramelized, very lightly, right? And they're completely translucent. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to add half a cup of white wine into the pan. All right, I'm going to turn the heat up to medium high slash high heat. And what I wanna do is I wanna cook this wine all the way down until it's completely dry, okay? So I'm using wine in this recipe. If you don't have wine, you can do a splash of beer, right? You could even put a little bit of cognac in it, like a couple tablespoons. But I like wine because it adds that little bit of acidity to the sauce and it adds that depth of flavor, right? And so, one of the ways uh, that we like to talk about and think about cooking a lot at Truffle Shuffle is that you'll notice a lot of times the best recipes, they have a lot of subtle flavors that are added into the dish. And it's not that I want you to taste the gravy and say, oh wow, the wine and that gravy tastes delicious, right? It's more so like, wow, that gravy is delicious. I wonder what went in there. and. You'll notice if, if ever you, you start to remove the little things from the recipe to make it easier or more efficient, that's when a dish has kind of like a singular note to it and doesn't really taste as good as it could, right? You really gotta think of flavors very similar to like, I don't know, like a symphony or something, right? You have all the different components uh, working individually, but together it's the sum of the parts. My pan is almost dry, all right? You can see, pan is almost dry. There's almost no liquid left, all right? And once you get there, now I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium, and I'm gonna add my flour, okay? And again, this is two tablespoons of flour over here. So I got one tablespoon going in. And what we're doing is just sprinkling that flour on top of those vegetables, and we got a term for this in French. We call it sanger, right? Sanger means to sprinkle the flour on top. And you always want to add flour like this to create our roux, okay? And this is our roux over here. Let me show you how it's looking, you see that? It almost looks like wet sand, right? And that's all of our shallots, our garlic. Um, the wine has cooked all the way down and very importantly, our butter. And what we want to do is cook that roux on about medium heat, just for a minute or so, just to kind of wake it up a little bit, right? Just because whenever you work with, uh, whenever you work with flour, especially in the form of a roux when making things like gravies, um, which we call gravy in English, right? In French, it's a velouté, right? So. Whenever you're making velouté, you always gotta make sure to cook the, the flour out, otherwise it can have kind of a pastiness on your palate, okay? So come over here, keep stirring up that roux in that pan, all right? Beautiful. And at this point, my roux is looking beautiful. It's cooked just for a couple minutes. Okay, now I'm ready to add my broth, all right? So, the thing is, whenever you're adding broth to a gravy, you don't wanna add all the broth at once, because otherwise you're gonna get little lumps. You're gonna get little lumps in your gravy, okay? And what I want is a nice, smooth gravy over here. So, what I'd like for you all to do is go ahead, take that broth, Again, we're using a little little bone broth over here, but if you made your own stock, that's fine as well. And just put one cup of broth in the pan to start. All right? Place one cup of that broth in our pot. Again, I'm on about medium heat over here. Okay? But once I add my broth, I'm gonna turn the heat up to medium high. Okay? And now our goal here is to whisk that pot and we're basically looking to whisk the roux into the broth 
And what's gonna happen is the roux is gonna dissolve and then once that broth gets hot enough to about 185 degrees at least, uh, it's gonna activate the flour and we're gonna form a paste at the bottom of the pan, okay? And the paste is not gonna form until you fully bring that broth up to a boil, okay? Sometimes with gravies, where people have a difficult time is they'll never bring the broth all the way up to a boil. And it's, it's really important that you do that because again, otherwise you never fully activate um, that flour, okay? So at this point, my broth over here is completely boiling. As you can see, it's got nice and thick, okay? So I've been whisking this consistently to make sure there are no lumps, all right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my broth into my pot over here, okay? Add the rest of that broth. And again, keep it on about medium high heat, right? And what we wanna do is we wanna bring this, again, up to a boil. Once it's at a boil, we're gonna turn it down to a simmer. I'm also gonna add my thyme leaves because I like to cook those in just a little bit into the broth. And we're also gonna add just a pinch of truffle salt, all right? Not too much. We can always add more later, but it's, it's very important when you're cooking to kind of season in layers and season from time to time, okay, to make sure that you get a beautiful uh, finished product. So at this point, again, I wanna bring that gravy up to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, and simmer that gravy for about 20 minutes, okay? So we're gonna continue to cook ours over here, and we'll see you here in about 20 minutes after that gravy is that time to simmer. All right, so now that our sauce has had time to simmer and thicken up, you can see looking absolutely gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna take my spoon, dip my spoon in, you can see, just barely coating the back of my spoon. All right, and the thing is with gravies, they're always gonna be really thick, uh, sorry, really thin when they're very, very hot, but I don't, like, I don't like making my gravy too thick for Thanksgiving, only because many of us, the way we serve gravy for Thanksgiving is you, tip it into a little gravy boat and then you put it on the table and it kind of cools down, right? So that's why this isn't a super, super thick gravy over here. All right, but we're gonna add our finishing touches. So we're gonna add that shop Trouble Carpaccio. All right, come in here, whisk that in. And then I'm just gonna have you give it a, a little taste, all right, to make sure that the seasoning is right too. Wow. Oh, That's spot on. Yeah. I just need a pinch of salt. Okay. Awesome. So as you can see it, we got our beautiful Thanksgiving gravy over here. Okay. Look at that. That chopped thyme, those shallots and garlic. All right, that little chopped truffle over there too. Again, absolutely stunning. So, if you are serving this immediately, right, you can just serve it right out of the out of the pot. It's nice and hot. You can transfer it to a gravy boat, serve it up uh, with the rest of that Thanksgiving meal. But gravy is honestly super easy to make the night before too, or a couple hours before you're serving uh, Thanksgiving. So, if you're making this ahead of time, I want you to just take that pot, right, allow it to come to room temperature. You can transfer uh, that gravy into a, a container, pop it in your fridge, and then the next day just warm it back up in a little sauce pot like this. So uh, make sure you use that gravy to top those potatoes, that turkey, right? Any uh, mashed uh, sweet potatoes or Brussels sprouts that you might be enjoying with it too. But again, hope you enjoy this truffleized version of Thanksgiving gravy. 
and add any of those pan drippings from that turkey as well. They're gonna taste absolutely delicious. But with that, enjoy this sauce and hope you enjoy the rest of your beautiful Thanksgiving meal.